I'm going to create a full stack app with Next.js and Firebase without writing any code. All the code will be written with AI using Cursor and V0. And you'll learn how you can use these tools for your apps as well. We'll also easily secure the application using ArcJet. The app I'll create is one I've been thinking about for a while. It's basically a simple budgeting application to keep track of my kids allowance digitally and to allow my kids to check how much money they have. Parents can log in to manage their kids' accounts and kids can see their total and expenses without logging in. We'll create the initial design of our app in V0 and then bring it into Cursor. I found that VO is better at design than Cursor, so that's why we're doing it that way. So to figure out what we want to tell to do, I actually have already used ChatGPT. I explained what I wanted to do and I had it revised and just and just make even more clear of the application I want. It has the purpose, the different features, the kids dashboards, the parent controls, what I want for security and privacy, and what we're gonna do for the tech details. So I'm just gonna copy all that, and then I'm gonna say, create this app. And then I'll just paste in that whole thing from ChatGPT. And now it's just gonna create the code for us. Okay, it's done. I see it made some mistakes, like it says previous code remains the same, and I noticed it put the environment variables right within the code, but we'll get all that changed in cursor. And we can't actually preview it because of Firebase, but let's still download this code and bring it into cursor. So to download, I'll just click add to code base, and I could run this command to add it to our code automatically, but I'm just going to download the zip. And now I've opened up the code in cursor. I just open up the folder. We can see all the code right here. And now I just want to do command L. Command L is going to open up our chat window. Now in chat, we can basically ask questions about anything in our application. But what's really cool is Composer. Composer can use agents. It can create different files. It can edit different files. It can even sometimes add stuff to the terminal. So we're gonna use Composer because it's a lot more powerful. And then we'll use chat for any simple questions we have. So basically we're gonna ask, we're gonna ask Composer to finish this application for us. So first we want to add the context. So I'm gonna add the whole code base. So it has access to our entire code base. And I'll say, please finish this application. And it'll just paste in everything from ChatGPT about our application and we just let it do its thing. It's now generating files, changing files. And again, we could have started our application in Composer instead of using VO first, but I think this will often end up with a better designed application. So now we're going to accept all, basically accept all the changes that it d did. Now you do have to go through and check things because sometimes something won't be done for you. If it has a check mark, it's been done for us, but I noticed this last one, oh, this one has a check box mark also. I thought maybe it hadn't been done, but it has been. Okay, how do I set up Firebase and run this locally? Okay, we'll just accept all these changes, but I saw there's some things we're definitely going to have to do. So I have a new terminal and we're gonna do npm install. And then while it's doing this, we have some other steps. It says to go to Firebase console and we'll create a project and we can just call it allowance, continue. We don't need analytics, create project. So while it's creating the project, we can see what else we need to do. We just follow the setup wizard. Then we're going to have to enable some things. We're gonna have to enable authentication, Firestore. So let's see if we can do that now. Okay, continue. So we're gonna use authentication, gonna enable this, and we're just gonna use Google authentication. And the support email, this will be my email address and save. Okay, now we have to enable Firestore. That's for the database. Create database and next, and we'll start in test mode, but we can always change it to production mode later. Okay, now we have to do some more configuration. So in the Firebase console, click the gear icon next to project overview. 
project settings, your apps, and then we're going to use the web app, web icon. Okay, I'm registering the app, and we will make sure we run npm install Firebase. So I'll run that, and now we have to update our environment variables. So .env.local. So I have to get all these things from Firebase, and we have them right here. So I'm just going to copy each of these over. I've updated my environment variables. So now we have to do some other things. And I can actually run these right from here. Now I have to select what I'm using Firebase for. So we'll select Firestore and we'll select Functions. I can use an existing project and we'll use the allowance one we just created. And let's go through this. We'll do TypeScript, yes, ESLint. We won't overwrite and we will install dependencies. And now we will deploy the Firestore rules and we'll run the dev server. It always opens up a new terminal session. You could just copy and paste into the current terminal session. And we already created this file. Let's see, we'll scroll down to see something that hasn't been done yet. Okay, it should be running. So let's test it. Okay, we got some errors. So this is gonna be the longest part of this process is fixing all the errors that get created. But I'll just copy this and I can paste it right into here. So I'll accept all the code changes and then I have to run these commands and I'll just kill some of these terminals and then we can run this again. Okay, kids allowance tracker. There's the, we can view kids, which shows nothing. We don't have any kids and we can also go to the parent dashboard. Okay, we can log in with Google and don't worry about one password. Let's see if this works. Okay, we've added a kid with a total of us. What, what happens if I click manage? Okay, we've add credit, add debit, set auto allowance, share, we can also share access. So let's add a credit of $10 and a description. I don't like these dialog boxes. So let's just see if this works. Okay, we've added this here. And now I can say he bought something, bought Pokemon cards. Oh, did that wrong. I wonder if I cancel it. Okay, it didn't add it. So add debit. The amount is $5 Pokemon cards. Okay, and it shows the total. Now I've already found some things I don't like, like the dialog boxes. So I'm gonna go back over to cursor. I don't like the dialog pop-up boxes. All edits should be on the page. Okay, I can just accept all. And let's see if this works. Add transaction, and it's gonna be a credit or a debit. So let's add uh, $3, and this is going to be a debit, and this is going to be for, oh, it changes the color, that's kind of cool, candy. And then we can also delete things. Okay, that worked. Now let's see if we can view this from the, the kids page. Kit Corwin's dashboard, and we can see the transaction history. Nice. Now let's go into the parent dashboard again, and let's see if we can set the weekly allowance. So I'm going to set the weekly allowance to $10, and that didn't change anything. When I changed weekly allowance, it did not change. I should be able to set the day of the week to get the allowance. Okay, accept all. Current allowance paid every Monday. That's kind of nice. I'm going to change this to 10 and we'll pay it every Sunday and save. Okay, $10 paid every Sunday. I'm skipping ahead a bit here past the part where I get the share access feature to work and then get the automatic allowance feature to work using Firebase functions. But the process is the same as what I've already shown you. Now there's definitely some more things we could do with this, such as making this URL be a little easier like a kid's name, but Right now, I actually want to make sure our application is more secure. To do that, we are going to use this video's sponsor, ArcJet. But it really goes along with the theme of this video, which is to learn how to create applications as quick as possible. So we're specifically going to add bot detection and rate lim limiting to this application because once we put this out in the wild, we don't want bots coming in and scraping everything and also like accessing the URLs over and over and over. 
and costing us a bunch of money by going to the website a lot. So what I'm gonna do is get logged in here and then we need to go through this setup. We're gonna create a site, which is going to be allowance tracker. And then I'm going to copy the key. Now if I click over here, we can follow the directions to get started with Next.js. And this tells us to run npm i arcjet next. So I'll run that in our terminal here. And we can close the composer for now. So I could use composer to help create all the code to add arcjet, especially if I added some of the arcjet documentation to composer. But I'm gonna simplify things and I've already created all the files and I'm going to show you what I've added to add bot detection, the shield, and also rate limiting. So first I created a middleware.ts that will basically run for every request. Every time you go to any page, it's going to run this middleware. And I've added, um, well, well, first of all, I've imported the create middleware detect bot and shield. So basically we create an object called arcjet and we, and most of this comes right from the documentation. We can just add a rule, the detect bot rule, and this is going to not allow most bots, but it will allow search engine bots and monitoring bots. And then we can add the shield just like this. The ArcJet shield protects your application against common attacks, including the OWASP top 10. So it's as easy as that. Just adding this middleware file and adding detect bot and shield adds those things. I had to do a little more to add the rate limiting. So first of all, I created a new folder called API and the rate limits.ts. And in this file, I use a lot of the code from the ArcJet documentation, just like in the middleware file, we're creating this ArcJet object and we're deciding what type of rate limiting that we want. So there's different types. The, the main types are fixed window, sliding window, window and token bu bucket. I like sliding window. Basically for every 30 seconds, the user can get up to 10 requests. And the default is to make it based on the user's IP, but you can also make it based on whether the user is logged in or not. And you can make it so a logged in user gets more requests than someone that's not logged in. So in this API, we are going to create a function and we are going to get the decision. ArcJet is going to have a decision on whether, on whether it's getting rate limited or not. So if we scroll down, we get a decision here, which is coming from ajartject.protect. It's trying to protect and it's gonna decide if it should be rate limited or not. And then we can get information about the response and we decided we see if the decision is denied if it is rate limited then we'll send too many requests and a status of 429 else or if it's not rate limited we will just return the response so we're just going to apply the rate limit to the kids page so we need we i've added some import statements we're going to access the rate limit request that we just added plus we need the headers and redirect and then this whole section right here is new. Now everything after this try block should actually be indented one more time, but this still, is still gonna work. So we await a rate limit request to the kids URL. And then if the status is 429, that means it's been rate limited, we'll redirect. Else we'll just do everything as normal. And then we add this try block and we are returning an error if we are not able to fetch the kids. So let's see how that, this works. I'm at the kids page, and if I just click refresh a few times, 404, this page could not be found. Now, we could actually create this error page, so we'll say something else, but you can see it's been rate limited. Now, if we wait a little bit of time and we go back to it, now it will show up again. So every 30 seconds, we get 10 possible requests. So ArcJet made it really easy to add rate limiting. You should now be able to create your own applications using Cursor. I'm actually excited to use the application I demonstrated in this video. You can now put full stack developer on your resume. Thanks for watching.